Welcome to the summit here on Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am very privileged today to get to be visiting with Haley Diestel Camp, now from St. Louis University, formerly from Drury. And Haley was our 2020 Female Athlete of the Year. And Haley, what a fantastic not only year you had, but career you had at Drury. Thank you for taking time with us today. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me for sure. Uh, Haley, in case you don't know, was the Division II National Player of the Year in 2020, the Division II National Player of the Year in 2019. I mean, Haley, seriously, the list of accolades could go on and on and on. And I'm sure that uh, Ed Beach at Drury is, is glad that he gets to work with the Internet, and not just a paper, because he continues to just add to that list. And and what a great list it was. In your senior season, you, you put together a um, – 32 consecutive wins. Of course, you scored 21 points a game, more than seven rebounds a game, shot better than 52% from the field for the entire season. Just a, a great season, a great career, and a great senior year. Talk about that. Uh, well, first, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it was one of those things that uh, I just kind of played to win, and we all played to win. And I say this every time, and I couldn't have done it without my teammates, my coaches. Um it was just a fun atmosphere to be a part of. And I think that's what um, also played into my success at Drury. Uh, there was never a game that was not fun to play in, or there was never a time that it wasn't fun to play in. And I think that's uh, what was most important was the fun aspect of it. And the, the awards and the stats kind of just came as it came. Well, you know, the awards happen for not just on the court, but what you did off the court, 3.65 GPA. And you received the Great Lake Valley Conference Paragon Award, which is something that's given out not only to someone who is a stellar athlete like you are, but someone who com who does well in the classroom and, and for your character as well. So I think there's a lot to be said for that, too. Yeah, um, I always told myself that I didn't want to be, be just a one-dimensional athlete. I wanted to also... Uh, be successful in the classroom as well. And that went back to the professors at jury. They were amazing. They worked with the athletes um, more than anyone could ever imagine. Um, with all of our away trips, um, just getting tests proctored, um, being able to come back and take a test. Uh, as an athlete, it's kind of overwhelming and stressful, but they did a very good job taking care of us. Um, it also was a transition from my freshman year. If you look at that GPA, my freshman year wasn't the greatest, <laughs> but, um, I think coming in, I knew that it was a, it, it was a change. And, um, so my freshman year was kind of the, the boundary and I just kind of busted out of that. And I wanted, especially by my senior year, I wanted to be able to, um, not only be a great basketball player, but also in the classroom as well. You know, we talk about what you did on the court with 32-0 and 0 your senior season, 35-1 and 1 your junior season. So, you know, you combine the two, 67-1, and 1, you make it to the national semifinals, losing to the eventual national champion in, in that game. Uh, 35 consecutive wins, 32 more after that. One game stands out to me that uh, I, I look at, and I think it's really pretty neat. February 29th, 2020, it's leap day, which is a cool day in and of itself, but it was senior night for you, and you set a new scoring record at Drury, 53 points in a 118-70 win over Rockhurst. Talk about that. Uh, it was an emotional night uh, for our seniors, especially, and um, it was one of those things that we went in, and uh, we got to watch the video before the game. The stands were full, uh, and so it was an emotional night, and I wanted to go out with a bang. Uh <laughs> I mean, that's that's as much as I can kind of sum it up. And it was amazing to see all the support from the people that have supported us for four years um, at Drury. And so to see the full crowd kind of put a fire in my heart to kind of go out there and have one more shot at it at the O'Reilly Center, because, I mean, 2020 ended kind of not very well. But um, right. you just never know when your last game's going to be. And so I think for me it was one of those things that, it was, I didn't know if we were going to host uh, regionals. I didn't know what was going to happen next. So I wanted to make my last game at the O remarkable. Well, and, and you would have had that opportunity. And, and unfortunately, 2020 cut everything short. I think that, you know, we've heard that phrase before. You never know when that last game is going to be. And yeah. it really, really came to light during 2020. 
I, I mentioned, you know, 67 and one in those last two seasons. And a night that you get 53 points, uh, your teammate, Deja Bernard, set a new record for assists. <laughs> she had 11 in that game. And yeah. of course, I, I'm sure if you guys are playing close to one another like you are, she's going to compile those assists as long as you keep making the shots. But yeah. you, you talked about your team and, of course, Coach Miller as well. Uh, what was it like to get to play on a team then and just keep on compiling those wins? It was one of those things that Drury was an awesome pl place to be. Uh, we had every single piece that we needed to be able to win those big games. Um, Molly was an amazing coach. She she always won. She played to win. Um, we had you know Deja, Lauren, Brooke. The list goes on and on uh, down the list of just the athletes that we had on our team that made the season in my four years at Drury remarkable. Um, we always played to win no matter what it took. Um, and so I think that's what played into why we never lost. Uh, even if times got rough in, in the game, we came together and we put our heads together and found a way to win. We're speaking now with Haley Diesel camp, formerly of Drury, and she has uh, moved on along. I, by the way, I want to encourage you, please do subscribe to the channel Midwest Sports Net and like and share this video. I'm enjoying the time to get to visit with Haley as I've watched you from afar and, and seen what you've done. But Haley, normally I, I try to uh, coordinate the color uh, on the screen to go with the, the school with which you're playing. When you notice I don't have Drury red there, I have St. Yeah. Louis blue as you have moved on along and, and you're working as a graduate assistant with the St. Louis Billikens and, and getting to work and learn under coach Lisa Stone. Yeah. Um, right after I was done playing, I kind of had a freak out moment because all of a sudden our career was, my career was done. I didn't have really a set plan of what I wanted to do. Um, and so I reached out to St. Louis university and um, they gave me the opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, not very many people can say that they, have a job in the next two weeks of not knowing what they're going to do. Um, so it was kind of a process going through it. And obviously with uh, quarantine and shutdown, it was kind of hard to go through the process of getting hired and everything, but it, it worked out and it was, um, it was a nice experience even getting to finally get to go through a, a job interview. Um, it was something that, I mean, I worked um, while I was at jury, but it, it was like a big kid job now. I mean, I was going out <laughs> and I was, um, not a player anymore, which is different for me. And so I got here and um, obviously COVID has taken a turn on the athletic world. It's a little bit different now. And so I'm learning the coaching skills in a different way, which is, is nice because you never know when there's going to be another pandemic or what's going to happen. Um, and so Lisa and all the assistant coaches took me under their wings. Uh, the players are incredible. Um, they brought me in like their own. And I think that's the most important thing for me was finding somewhere where I fit in well. And um, I've learned so much, even in the little bit of time that I've been here. I mean, it hasn't been very long. We've gone through four shutdowns now, which is never fun. Wow. Um, but it just kind of goes back to the thing of you never know when your last game is going to be. You never know when um, anything is going to get taken away from you. So I take every day. I do the best of my ability. And I, um, try to learn something new every day, but also put the skills that I've learned, um, to my, to the test. And I feel like every day I grow in a different way. And even the last three years of being here, I know that coaching is in my passion and that's what I want to do. I, I've got those awards for myself, but now it's time to kind of give back to those girls that are doing the same exact thing. They're wanting to break records. They're wanting to win national championships and uh, conference championships. And I feel like I have a piece of that still always with me that, that I know what it takes to win and I know what it takes to win a championship. And so I want to give back to those girls, just like, um, everyone's given to me. Well, I, I was going to have you look back and look forward. Sounds like you're already looking forward. And so <laughs> that, that, that is absolutely yeah. great. I look forward to following your career as, as you continue coaching and giving back then. So I'll ask you then to go ahead and look back. Is there a moment that stands out to you in your time as a player in college that you think, wow, this, this was really something cool? Yeah. Um, I get asked this question a lot and I think every single time I answer it in a different way, I think it's <laughs> by the day, uh, something stands out to me that is different from the year before or, um, and so I think, Last time I said my 53 points, but I think this this time I would definitely think it was just being able to be a part of a team that 
really meant the world to me. And um, winning four conference championships, I think that was a huge um, thing that meant a lot to me, um, just to be able to experience that with especially the three seniors that we had. Um, we came in as little freshmen and we kind of built our way to the top. And that was one of my favorite memories was just to be able to share that moment with them one last time. And um, I also, I know you said one, but another one was just um, winning the Sweet 16 for the first time. Um, my freshman and sophomore year, we got to that point, but we fell a little bit short. And this year or that year we had, we got to bring it to the O a lot of the, Stands were full. Um, we had that great atmosphere that you don't find a lot of places at Division Two, And so I think that was another great memory that I had was that just stuck out to me. And you take it for granted because, I mean, I'm a part of the St. Louis Billikens now. And, you know, we have just our families in the stands. And even for the first couple of games, that wasn't even the case. And so um, right now, I think that was probably my biggest moment was just – remembering all the fans in the stands and being able to um, hold the trophy up in the air that we've been working so hard for. Well, I don't have the authority to confer upon you a national championship, but I do <laughs> want to remind the folks watching that you all were number one in the country, yeah. <laughs> undefeated at 32 and 0 as you were headed to host another regional yeah. tournament. So, um, I, you know, I, I can't, call the banner company and have them design anything for you. But I, I, I want to remind everyone of that. So you, you go yeah. out on top, definitely. Yeah. Haley, success to you and in, in now your coaching career. And, and congratulations for all that you've done. Again, Midwest Sports Nets, Female Athlete of the Year in 2020. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Yeah, and thank you for having me. And thank you so much for that honor, too.